So the first thing, obviously the cell is set up, we've tweaked it, made it um, set up quite nicely. Um, so the trick with this sail is, I'm not sure if you've used it before, but put the mask through the luff of the sail, not through any of the canvas. You can even poke it out the top of the mast or uh, next to the webbing. So mast above the webbing, and then you can put the forestay and the side stay on. Then you can push the mast below the webbing. That will make it easier to get these two on if you can push the mast beyond the boat webbing. And, um, and then you can essentially raise the sail uh, and the mast in that state with no bends connected. And then after you uh, flip the boat on the side, then you go and clip all the bends on. We found that to be the best method of um, getting these sails on because they are quite tricky uh, with its design. Um, try not to tear the sail, it's almost very fragile. They've got a bit of extra material here to, to stop that tearing. That's the vulnerable part of it. So just be very careful when you're setting it up. Now the boat breaker that comes with the boat clips onto the top shekel. So at the very top, you clip the, with a dog bone, you loop the boat breaker around the quarter inch pin, just to the side of it, inside the shekel. And then at the other end, you just loop that around here and you pull that on. So that's how the boat breaker works. And um, this knot here will stop the mast from falling all the way back. So you can actually just clip it on and then get the mast in on this knot and then tighten up as you need. It needs a fair bit of force to undo, um, to, to get this wire on. We have a fair bit of rig tension initially set up with the boat because it helps with boat handling. Not having a floppy rig, we found that to be the best setup for the Swift. So, you know, most of the top guys are running quite a, quite a tight rig tension nowadays. It's changed a little bit. It will sag anyway because of the stretch in the wires. So you'll notice that Lewitt's stay will go saggy. Uh, they all do that, but initially we set them up pretty firm. So in terms of the boat, so when you get this, obviously it will be in the boat box. Um, I'll go through the bowsprit assembly later, which, which has to be poked through and, and bolts connected. At the moment, yours is not there yet. We'll, we'll do that soon. But what I wanted to talk to you about was wings, obviously um, perpendiculars go on first onto the boat. There's four bolts that hold the wing bars together. And just start the bolts by hand first. So right through here, they're M8 bolts. Start them by hand, and then uh, to make sure that it goes in nicely, and then you can go and use a um, an Allen key to tighten them up. Tighten them up quite firm, but don't try to go super hard. Go go very firm and, and hard, but not don't sort of lever it and go crazy because um, you can damage the boat if you go crazy tension. So firm, tight, but not ridiculously tight. Um, and uh, same with the deck pin bars. Once that's in, these tramps will slide into the sail track here. So they're basically sort in and drop down. And then the outer wing bars just push off, push on over the, the, the track. So just make sure that when, you, when you're guiding the outer wing bar on, that you use both hands and just make sure that you align the edge of the trampoline with this channel. You know, because it can, if it catches, you can, and, and you kick it, you can delaminate the carbon. So just make sure that it's nicely seated. Once it's seated everywhere, then you give it a few whacks, you know, with hand, and it'll get all the way on. So just make sure that's aligned before you put the outer wing bar on. Um, so that's in terms of assembly of the wing frame. It's it's very straightforward. This is designed to not take more than you know five ten minutes. There's four bolts on the underside of these wing bars. So just make sure that you look underneath and make sure that this is completely aligned with the thread inside. Because it's only fragile carbon, you need to make sure that this hole is exactly where the thread is. If it's not, you can push it in, you can push it out a little bit. Just make sure that it's perfect and start the bolt with hand first. Make sure it goes in and only then use the Allen key. If you force the bolt with Allen key first and if it's not aligned, it will strip the thread. Um, so you just have to be careful that it's perfectly aligned. If you need to push the outer wing bar out, what I like to do is get a bit of timber, put it in that corner, and then you can push it out like this. You know, get a, get a mallet or, or a hammer. So you're pushing on that edge, but you're only doing a little bit at a time. Get this out five, 10 millimeters, then go to this side, get this one out five or 10 millimeters. So you're only doing a little bit at a time. If you try to do too much 
from one side, it puts a lot of load on the wing bar and can break things. So just make sure that you're doing a little bit at a time until you can get the whole thing off. Uh, next thing is the gantry. So the gantry is a little bit... Um, tricky to put on. So, but not difficult once you know the tricks. Big thing is, you need to get a red Loctite. I think it's 243 number um, onto all of these threads before you put the gantry on. That means that these can't unwind with twist um, and torsional load that's applied to the bolts because if it goes loose it, it can then start um, putting additional load on things that's not meant to be there. So you want a nice tight gantry. So I would start by first buying a few things. You will definitely need a 10 millimeter ratchet spanner like this very difficult to do this without one of these so just get one of these you can get a cheap one and then the second thing you need is you need a long spanner that goes through here uh, this is an m10 nut so you'll need half a meter long or, or two 250 ones 250 extensions a long arm spanner again with a with a socket um, and yeah you just wrench that up and through that hole so it needs to be long enough, obviously, to, to reach. Um, so you will get that spanner, you will get um, your nut, you can place it at the end of the spanner. Um, you can get a bit of tape so it doesn't fall off. Poke it through, uh, gantry will just go straight on, and then try to, you know, get the nut onto the thread. There's obviously two of them, and just try to get both of them on. It'll take a few guys, don't force anything. It'll, once it's seated, it'll go on nicely. And I would attach these ones uh, loosely first. Don't tighten them yet, just get the nuts onto the thread. You can get a hand at that point. You can tape the gantry in place with some tape or get somebody to hold it. You can then flip the boat upside down. And on the underside, this is how you actually access and attach the top nuts to the thread. Um, the trick for this is, because it's very difficult to, to get in here, you can't get the ratchet to get enough of a bite so you have to start the thread by hand and the best way to do it is we'll give you some yellow sticky tape that you can put on your finger like that so you start the tape here wrap it around your finger and that will stick to the nut you can then get the nut stick it to your finger and then if you're upside down you'll be laying you know sort of the boat will be like this and you'll just get that finger and you'll just roll that like that and just try to get the thread to bite. It only needs to just bite enough to put enough to stay on. It'll take you a few goes because it'll fall into the gantry, you'll have to fish it out then. But regardless, just get enough to, to, for the thread to bite. Once you've done that, you can then take the sticky tape off and get a few more turns. Do the same to the other side. And only then can you put the ratchet spanner on and with this ratcheting part, just tighten that up. Do the same with the bottom leg, tighten that up nice and hard. It's a slightly tricky job, but it's not difficult. It just re requires the right technique. And um, for us to be able to get this beautiful gantry with no holes and no water intake essentially, except for the back of it, does require a slightly tricky procedure, but it's a performance gain. And that's why we've gone on this path of, you know, pain to put it on, but there's a performance gain associated with it. Um, I would also recommend putting some tape over these holes once you're finished and the gantry is attached because that will stop the water getting inside and at takeoff you'll have less water um, and a lighter boat. So that's the gantry. Um, toe straps, very straightforward. There's a titanium bolt here um, that you just unwind, feed the toe strap in and then put the bolt back in again. Very straightforward. At the front of the uh, toe straps the um, Dyneema, there's a plate here, carbon plate which you'll see in your kit. Um, you start your, so you place the carbon plate in position, get the rope to, to knot here, so there's a knot on the rope. It'll go down through the hole, through the wing bar, around to this side, back through, and then there's another knot. So essentially it's, it's a plate with two knots, and then the toe strap ties to that rope. That's how that works. So to, to poke this through, I would use a bit of wire or something like that to 
to get the rope through these holes because they're quite tight. So two stopper knots, that's how the toe straps attach. If you had problems about this, just let me know. There's lots of photos that I sent through as well in regards to, to um, how to do this. I would definitely recommend loose toe straps, unlike the Exa set and Mark II. You want the toe straps to be about this high and fairly loose. Um, tie a bit of shock cord from this rope to the eyelid on the toe strap so that it's under tension, which makes the toe strap tight with shock cord, but, not, but then it will stretch once you put your feet under and load on it. What that does is it keeps the front edge raised by having the, 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 shock, the toe strap under tension. But then it will stretch up because with solid wing bars, you need to be able to get your heels under the trampoline. So you can't have tight toe, toe, toe straps like we used to back in the day on the soft wings because um, you can't dig your heels under this because it's solid. Um, the four deck fairing, again, fairly straightforward. They're just clips on four bolts that attach the four deck fairing. Two there, two here. Again, make sure that these are M M8, uh, M5 bolts. Make sure that you start the thread by hand, align it perfectly, and only then do you use the, um, the uh, spanner or the Allen key. So again, be very careful with these because if they misalign, they can strip the thread because it's only um, tapped into carbon. Um, you shouldn't have to take the foredeck off too often. It's, it's designed to be taken off only when you have a problem or you want to repair some. No, change a rope or something like that, but essentially the foredeck is part of the boat in the sense that it stays on and, and really once it's on it's sort of on for probably six months, four months at a time. Um, now the Ben and the Cunningham setup here, I've already adjusted for you. The um, rake is adjusted on this boat. All this is adjusted for, so for maximum Bang and Cunningham. These come together, so this is perfect. You don't have to touch this. Don't have to touch the Bang. That's all adjusted. You don't have to touch the cunning hand either. So all this, you know, you clip these ears, these blocks onto these ears coming down. Um, you'll have to use a lot of force to get these to go on. You can use a boat breaker or some cunning hand boat breaker to get these pre-tensioned. But um, I think you'll be able to flip these only just. If you pull down on the sail, you'll just be able to get them onto there before um, you can pull the cunning hand on hard. So um, that's pretty much as far as this setup goes. Um, I'll go in the next video as into what happens with this push rod and how to assemble this. And I'll also talk you in the next video through how to guide the take-ups of these ropes through these channels and through the mousing one that we've got set up. Because again, you know, when it gets pulled apart, you can't have um, spliced ropes anymore. So um, I'll go through that in the next video, but for now this is probably um, this is for it.